Now today we are going to discuss how to make a diagnosis. We will uh, do one portion of uh, this subject because it's a huge subject. Now this is important for medical students who are entering into the clinical part of their medical education. The medical education is basically divided into two portions, the basic sciences and the clinical sciences. In many medical schools, these are two separate categories and they are taught separately in different uh, years of training. But in uh, the modern medicine, these are now being integrated into a modular system. That is, they are going alongside each other. When we make a diagnosis, the first diagnosis we make is an anatomical diagnosis. What is an anatomical diagnosis? That we decide which organ system is at fault. Is it liver, it's kidneys, it is heart, it's brain, it's colon, or musculoskeletal system. So we make an anatomical diagnosis. Once we make an anatomical diagnosis using the data which is available to us, we try to make a etiological diagnosis. The etiological diagnosis is what is the cause of this clinical presentation the patient has. Now, the etiological diagnosis in the initial phases, it may not be possible to make a final conclusive diagnosis, so we make certain provisional diagnosis and few differential diagnosis. Provisional diagnosis means that we conclude that this patient is having disease for this particular diagnosis, for example, meningitis. And then we can construct a differential diagnosis, which is that any diagnosis which is similar to meningitis, for example, subarachnoid hemorrhage. So we uh, make a differential and then we verify that this patient is suffering from uh, which disease, it's meningitis or this is uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and that is called the final diagnosis. Whenever we make diagnosis, we have to have uh, our training in three different areas. One is the psychomotor domain, the second is affective domain and the third is cognitive domain. In the psychomotor domain, we generally have the clinical history taking, the bedside examination and certain bedside procedures if uh, required in every particular case. And then affective domain is uh, the uh, psychological handling of the patient as his problem. And the cognitive domain is that whatever data you have acquired, you synthesize it into a meaningful conclusion in the terms of making uh, an investigation plan or a treatment plan. So that is cognitive domain of working. Now, the first, the psychomotor domain, which consists of history taking, physical examination, and bedside testing. We keep ourselves to the first portion, the history taking. The history taking is extremely important, and we have been uh, taught right from our beginning and to our teachers, from their teachers, that history is very important. And after 30 years of experience in medicine, I find that this is 100% true, extremely important. It's the history which uh, tells you most of the time what's the diagnosis. And if you are good at history taking, you can make a diagnosis in many cases simply on history taking. This fact, fact cannot be denied. So as you go on learning, you will see that how important is history. Now in the history, the first thing is the presenting complaint, the complaints which have brought the patient to your uh, attention. Now, Presenting complaints, they should be described in chronological orders. Chronological order means the first complaint, first and the second complaint, second and, and so on. You see, and the patient's description should be used rather than medical terminology in uh, these uh, presenting complaints. Now we have an example of presenting complaints and see how the chronological order can change our understanding of the disease. There are three complaints headache, unconsciousness, and fever. So these are three complaints. We see what happens when patient presents in one order. For example, patient has developed headache, it's become unconscious, and later on has developed fever. Now, the, this example tells us that this patient might have subarachnoid hemorrhage because subarachnoid hemorrhage starts with a sudden onset headache. Patient may become confused, disoriented, or even unconscious. And you see after that blood which has leaked into the subarachnoid space, it disintegrates, it can lead to uh, 
fever so the patient can have fever and if the bleeding is close to the thermoregulator cent thermoregulating centers it may be the fever comes earlier what you can see the clear description that the patient started having headache became unconscious and then patient had developed fever another second situation is patient had fever started having headache and became unconscious so the fever came first after it came the headache and then the patient became unconscious so this is we are seeing in the first 24 hours or 70 uh, 48 hours in subarachnoid hemorrhage patient immediately becomes unconscious if the bleeding is large but the headache is always very dramatic very very dramatic but in meningitis the headache builds up slowly and you see the generally the fever comes first and patient has headache and after some time if not treated patient becomes unconscious now you see how changing the sequence of just three symptoms diagnosis is totally changed so that's why very important that you take the history very carefully and chart it very carefully and then go for analysis and then we go for further assessment so that is the history of the present illness the past history the medical history the socio-economic history the treatment history the personal history the occupational history the socio-economic history the gynecological history in case of female so you see you go for all those steps through this and you can make a diagnosis when you have completed the history in almost 70 to 80 percent of the cases and then you go for examination in the light of the history you confirm the findings which are present on the history on your physical examination and after you have done the clinicals you make a plan that you got this sort of information what to do for example in this case if you are considering that this patient has subarachnoid hemorrhage you would go for a plain CT scan of the brain that in most of the cases clarify that there is subarachnoid hemorrhage but if you are confused you go for a lumbar puncture and see the presence of xanthochromia similarly if you are considering meningitis go for a complete blood count that will tell you the presence of leukocytosis you go for a CT scan just to see if there is uh, increased intracranial pressure and the diagnosis is basically dependent on the lumbar puncture examination so you see according to your information you can plan and sequence your investigations uh, for making a diagnosis that's why you see the disease model currently is biopsychosocial economic so it is very important that until and unless we address all those four issues that is bio means physical part of it psycho means the emotional part of it social means the uh, patient's social condition and economic condition so until and unless we take into consideration all these four components we may not be able to help the patient uh, as he should be helped so the history and physical examination they guide you how to economize the patient's uh, investigation and treatment so all these steps should be taken care of so this is uh, briefly about the first step uh, in making a diagnosis in the coming lectures we will discuss the other portions of the uh, steps in making the diagnosis.